Hey everyone, today I'm recapping a thriller mystery film from 2010 called Peacock. Before we dive into the story, I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Now let's jump into it. The movie starts in a small town called Peacock. We see a woman named Emma rushing around outside her house, trying to get the laundry. A train passes by nearby. Emma quickly grabs the newspaper when the coast is clear. Meanwhile, the radio talks about a big election coming up. Emma makes breakfast and watches the kids next door from the window. She's careful not to be seen and keeps an eye on the clock. At 8.15 am, she goes into a room and sits in front of a mirror. Then, to our surprise, she takes off her makeup, wigs, and clothes, revealing she's actually a man named John Skilpa. It turns out John has dissociative personality disorder, which means he has more than one personality. He often forgets things from his past. After eating breakfast made by his other self, John gets ready for work. He opens a step on the porch and finds a secret box filled with baseball cards. Inside one of the card covers, there's a bank passbook, which John takes before putting the box back. It's after riding his bike to work at a big bank. John doesn't talk much to his co-workers. His boss, Mr. French, gives him a pile of papers and slips a flower into John's pocket for the mayor's celebration. When John gets his paycheck, he's happy. Later, he uses a key hidden in a baseball card cover to access his safe deposit box. He puts some money in his locker and records his savings. After work, he relaxes by a lake and eats lunch packed by Emma, who left a note asking him to stop by the market. At night, he buys groceries and his usual things. Baseball cards and chocolates, he meets his neighbor, Mrs. Sternberg, but feels too nervous to accept her dinner invitation. Back home, he puts his bank passbook and baseball card cover in a secret box, heats up dinner made by Emma, and goes to bed. The next morning, Emma is doing laundry when a train mishap sends a carriage toward her property. Luckily, she's not herself, but when she wakes up, she's surprised to see many people around her. They're confused and ask if she's John's wife, but she ignores them and rushes back inside the house. She leaves a note on the breakfast plate. When John, who doesn't remember anything, gets ready and goes outside, he's surprised by all the fuss. A neighbor tries to talk to him, but he gets nervous and goes back inside, locking the door. He finds a note from his other self advising him not to talk to strangers and go straight to work. He bikes quickly to work, avoiding Officer Tom on the way, and rushes to the bank. At work, Mr. French and Mayor Crow ask about the lady at his house, but John insists on finishing his work. When he returns home, he finds kids playing in the backyard wreckage, which angers him. Inside, Officer Tom is waiting. Tom tries to talk to him about the woman at his house and suggests taking action against the train company for his mother's death. But John just wants the carriage removed from his backyard. He calls the train company and asks politely to speed up the process, but they say it will take at least a week. The next morning, Emma is making breakfast when she finds two unexpected visitors at her door. They introduce themselves as Sandy Krill, the mayor's wife, and Connor, the senator's advisor. They're here to see John, but Emma tells them he's not home. They want to use the train crash site for the senator's campaign event, expecting lots of people from Peacock Town to attend. Sandy mentions her husband, the mayor, owns the bank where John works. She runs a shelter for women and wants to raise money for it at the rally. Emma feels overwhelmed and goes upstairs, but sees a happy family outside and dreams of her own success. It's already a 15, but she decides to wait a bit longer. Emma offers cookies and drinks to the guests, and learns the shelter also helps with child adoption. Sandy asks Emma to convince John to allow the rally for the shelter's fundraising. After the guests leave, Emma gets a call saying John will be late for work. In the next scene, John rushes to his office to find the mayor, his wife, and the advisor waiting. The mayor tells John some news about his wife almost getting hurt and shows him a picture of her. John gets surprised when Sandy says she met his wife earlier and they had a good talk about the rally. Sandy tells John they're planning to have a rally in his backyard with lots of people coming. When John hears that his wife likes the idea, he gets upset and says his wife isn't his boss. He says he makes the decisions for the house and doesn't want the rally. He insists that the train in his backyard will be moved soon. The mayor tells John he really needs the rally to help his political career and asks him to think about it. Later, when John gets home, a young mother named Maggie approaches him. John isn't happy to see her because they have a history. 
Maggie asks for money because she wants to leave town. She explains that she stopped receiving checks from John's mom a year ago, and now she's short on cash. John didn't know about this arrangement. Maggie reveals that John's mom used to send her money to take care of her son, Jake. John didn't know about Jake until now. When John sees Jake's face, he goes upstairs to get some money. Shortly after, Emma shows up but doesn't remember John's memories. She asks Maggie who she is and why she's there. Maggie lies, saying she's John's friend and came to check on him. She plans to leave with her son Jake, but Emma offers them a ride. Maggie says John is sleeping, goes to the garage and brings out her old car. They drive to a shabby trailer, which is their destination. Maggie asks Emma to come in for a drink and starts talking about her past. She shares that she met John's mom in a bar a few years ago. His mom offered her money to see John, but when Maggie went to their house, she saw bad things happening. John's mom treated him terribly, causing him to develop a disorder. After his mom died, John created a new personality to cope. Maggie also reveals that Jake's dad is John. This surprises them, but Maggie starts caring for John like a son. She wants to adopt Jake, who is technically hers too, but learns she and John must sign papers together. Emma decides to help by supporting Sandy, who can assist with the adoption. She lies to Sandy and Connor about her husband, agreeing to a rally. On her way home, Officer Tom says they both need to sign incident reports, but Emma ignores him and walks away. Emma went to see Maggie at her trailer. Maggie seemed to be living with a mean man who didn't treat Jake well. Emma worried about Jake's safety, but didn't want him to leave town. She tried to convince Maggie to go to Fanny's shelter. Maggie thought the shelter was only for women who didn't have big goals. But when Emma mentioned the shelter could help with good jobs, Maggie agreed to give it a chance. The next morning, Emma found John's secret box in her backyard. She opened it and found a key in a bank passbook mentioning John's savings. But at night, there was a knock on the door. John opened it and found Fanny with a gift. Fanny wanted to talk to Emma, but John acted strangely as usual. After Fanny left, John got really angry, refused dinner, and broke plates. In the morning, John woke up feeling better because Emma had taken care of everything. He found breakfast well-cooked but was distracted by noise outside. He found preparations for a rally and got angry, shouting at everyone to leave. He then fixed something damaged in an accident and paid someone to remove a train carriage. When John got to work, his boss scolded him for missing the previous day. John didn't remember it, hinting that another personality, Emma, was taking control. Maggie called him from the women's shelter, revealing that Emma had brought her there. John decided to skip work and go to the shelter, pretending to make a donation. When John meets Maggie, he tells her to stay away from Emma and leave town with Jake because it's not safe for him there. He even offers her money to start a new life elsewhere. John can't go back home because he fears turning into Emma. He offers to drive Maggie to her relative's place. Later, he tries to spend the night at the bank, but it's closed, so he ends up by the lake where Officer Tom finds him. John confesses his past trauma to Tom but refuses to go home. Eventually, he agrees but then sneaks off to a hotel. The next morning, Emma has taken over John's body. She sends away a worker hired by John and promises to talk to Maggie about leaving town. Maggie tells Emma about John's offer to leave, but Emma tries to persuade her not to. Fanny offers Maggie a job, but Maggie refuses. This angers a mysterious woman who decides to intervene. First, Emma calls Maggie pretending to be John and tells her to meet at a motel to give her money. Then, Emma, dressed as John, goes to the bank, gets money from a locker, and puts it in a bag. So that night, she changes her appearance a bit and takes a man to the motel, pretending to have someone named Titus. But she kills the man, dresses him in John's clothes, and sets the room on fire. Maggie arrives later and sees the burning body, realizing John is dead. The next day, Emma pretends to be shocked when told about her husband's death. Later, Emma spends time with a boy named Jake but realizes he's not safe with her. She gives money to Maggie to take Jake away. At a rally, people start to worry when Emma doesn't show up. Sandy tries to find her, but the doors are locked. The movie ends with Sandy sitting quietly, hinting at a battle between Emma's personalities.